So everybody is going to start in a pose of your choice. Seated, cross-legged, child's pose, shavasana, anyone you want to. Let me move this around. And whichever one you've chosen, if it's comfortable, close your eyes. If it's not, then just have a soft dristi, which is, uh, dristi means just, just looking at a, a gaze, a focus, just very soft, as if you're looking at nothing. I understand that some people don't feel comfortable with their eyes closed or may feel a little dizzy. So choose a pose. And start to arrive on the mat, connect to your breath, separate your day from your practice. We've been working on self-study, which is understanding our likes and dislikes, our thoughts and feelings, emotions, and what brings them up. And already you're using that self-study to serve you. So you've chosen whichever pose you've chosen to start with because it suits the body that you have or it feels good in the body that you have. Start to deepen the breath. Can you take it down to the belly? Slowly out. I like to, sometimes I like to start in Shavasana because that to me seems almost traditional. I get to, I can relax a little bit. Um, However, sometimes when I'm laying on my back, looking at the ceiling, if I'm in, uh, my mind is very busy, that's not suitable for me. So I don't take Shavasana then. Then times I would prefer to maybe start my practice seated because it makes me a bit more aware, a bit more present and my mind doesn't wander as much because I'm thinking about my back or, you know, are my shoulders down? And sometimes it's really gorgeous to start in child's pose because all you can see is the mat or your body and it's easier to turn inwards. And it's easier to shut everything out and start the practice that way. So um, lots of different ways to start a practice. You have to kind of tune into your body, what feels good, what do you like, why do you like it and choose it. going to do a couple of rounds of breathing wherever you are in whichever pose I want you to see if you can breathe in before out before and every in breath your ribs expand front left right center back and every exhale, they deflate, get smaller, and you get heavier into the ground, whether that's your hips in seated or your whole back body. And you can count these breaths, or you can choose to do it intuitively. So just know. When we started the course, we worked with in for three, out for three. And the more you come in tune with your body and practice yoga and slow things down, you may notice that you can, you have a longer breath, a slower breath. Maybe you can even work to in for five, out for five. Okay. 
final moment. One more breath. And those of you in Shavasana, laying on your back, bring your knees into your chest. And then roll to your right, come up to seated. Those of you in child's pose, walking your torso up to come to seated as well. I've chosen kneeling, but that might be uncomfortable for you. Maybe you just want to have cross-legged Sukhasana. Remember, you may want to lift your hips, might feel good. So choose the seated position that invites the natural curves back into your back, that S curve. And we're just gonna start by rolling our shoulders. So breathing in, bringing them up, and breathing out, taking them back down. Breathing in and up, out and back down. One more, in and up, out and back down. I'm gonna take it the other way. So for me, I'm going forward now, bringing in, and then out. In, bring your shoulders to your ears. Out, take them back down. One more, breathing in. And now we're gonna do a head roll. Drop the chin to the chest, roll your head to the left, all the way round. Be very, very mindful. Especially when we're here in the back, very slow. And the other way. And back to center, you're gonna look over your right shoulder. Again, the little neck stretch as well. Don't force it, wherever is comfortable. Back to center, take it to the other side. And back to centre. We're going to interlock the fingers, put them out in front, getting a stretch in between the shoulder blades, our rhomboids and our traps, stretching them. And then from here, I'm going to turn sideways. <laughs> we're going to almost go for a cat back. So we're going to scoop the tummy back around the shoulder, drop the head and come back up to neutral, two more. Scoop the tummy back around the spine, drop the head. Back to neutral, one last time. So you're really creating space in the shoulder blades, tucking the pelvis under, making an arch in your back, and back to center. Taking your hands behind you, interlocking your fingers if that's possible and pull the shoulders back. So again, the stretch on your chest, pec, shoulders, anyone that works at a desk may have rounded shoulders. Keep breathing. And then what we're gonna do is the opposite, we're gonna go into a cow-shaped spine. So we're just going to lift the chest and the sternum, lift the chin slightly so you're looking to maybe where the wall meets the ceiling and back to centre. Two more times, lift the breastbone, lift the chin, tilt the pelvis forward, shoulder blades melt down the back. Back to centre one last time, breathing in. Um, back to centre, placing your right hand on the floor, reaching up, leaning over. This pose is about creating space in the side body. We can go a little deeper if you want, you can walk your hands out, but what I want you to really focus on is growing your torso up rather than over. So we can get all the way down, but we're gonna really shorten this side body and that's not what we're about. 
keep breathing, create space. And back to center, placing the left hand on the floor, reaching up with the right. And over to the left. The side is easier for me. Something I've noticed. If you want to get a little deeper, you can, but be mindful that we're growing the torso taller than just trying to get over to the other side. Space. And breathe. Good. And we'll just do one little forward fold. Walk your hands out in front. Let your arms support you so there's not too much weight in your torso. Walk your hands in. And we're going to come up to a standing position at the front of the mat in Tadasana. I've got a little dog, dog that's joined me today. So I'm going to stand in the middle of my mat so I don't hit the jaws. We are going to do a couple of rounds of sun salutations. We're moving it on from what we've done over the last two weeks. So we're making it a little bit stronger. Know your body. Know what feels good. Don't push yourself too far because I'm saying so. I'm gonna give you the options. You take your choice. Maybe you start with one and work to the other. It's up to you. So front of the mat, feet and body into Dasana. Making sure we start in a great position. Shoulders back. Navel to spine, ever so gently. Feet pushing in the floor. Crown of the head lifted. You're gonna reach up, breathe in, arms overhead. Hands meet at the top maybe, looking at your hands. And breathing out, swan dive forward. I'm gonna keep my hands um, close together because of the walls. Forward fold. Breathing in, lift your head and chest half height. Tuck the neck in, navel to spine. And breathing out, back to forward fold. Bend your knees so your hands touch the floor. I'm gonna go slightly in front. You're gonna step back with the right foot. So you're in a lunge. Here, you have the option to bring your knee to the floor, which is what we've been doing for the last few weeks. Or if you want to try, you can pick up that knee. Push the heel to the back wall, and that front foot is really grounded into the mat. When you've created a bit of stability, we're gonna come up. So you can come to hands to heart center, or arms, biceps by ears. Breathe. Hands lower to the ground, in line with that front foot. So the back foot meets the front, left foot meets the right. So you have the option to bring your knees down if they're not already, which is what we've done previous weeks. Or if you want to, you can keep your knees raised and be in high plank. Wherever you are, breathe in, grow forward. Breathing out, lower to the ground, keeping the elbows tucked. Untuck the feet, adjust the hands so they're by your bottom rib. Breathing in, lift your head and chest to cobra. Using the back muscles rather than your hands. And breathing out, you're gonna come back down, tuck the toes, come into child's pose, or, um, sorry, child's pose with your toes tucked, or you can push your hips up into downward dog. If you're in downward dog, probably nice to have a big bend in the knees for the first few rounds. Pushing your hands and feet into the ground. If you're in child's pose, you're getting a gorgeous stretch in the toes. Very active.
And those of you in child's pose, lift your hips, come into downward dog. You're gonna raise your right leg and you're gonna bring it forward to your right hand. So you may need to help it along. You may need to give it a shuffle. You're gonna walk it in slightly. You have the option to drop the back knee here or you can stay in high lunge. Root your feet into the floor. Push that back heel back. Breathe in, lift up. Whoop. Nice and strong. Can you sink a little deeper into the hips? Breathe. Remember, you can have your hands to heart center if you wish. Whichever one you've chosen. Hands back down in line with the feet. You're going to bring that back foot to meet the front. Forward fold. Have the knees bent slightly, hips to the sky, head hanging heavy. Then take a big bend in the knees, hands on hips, clip the shoulders and elbows back, push through the floor and reset into Tadasana. I'm just gonna move away from the wall. We'll go on the other side. So breathing in, take your arms overhead. Breathing out, swan dive forward, flat back into forward fold. Breathing in, lift your head and chest halfway, hands on shin, thighs, or even the floor. Breathing out, folding down. You're gonna step back as far as you can with the left foot. Knee down is your option. Once you've settled, found your feet, breathing in, come up tall, hands to heart center or biceps by the ears, high lunge. Breathe. Hands on the floor. The right foot meets the left in plank or half plank. Wherever you are, breathe in, grow forward, breathing out, lower down. Elbows in, untuck the toes, adjust your hands, breathing in, lift your head and chest, squeeze the back muscles, hips into the mat, breathing out, back down, tuck the toes, child's pose, bent toes or downward dog. So choose what is best for you. I'm just here to guide you in your practice today. You know what suits your body. Everybody into downward dog if you're in child's pose. You're gonna lift the left foot and bring it through into your hands. May need to help it. Option for the back knee to meet the ground. Get stability, push the feet into the floor, navel to spine coming up. Breathe. And place your hands in line with your foot. Bring that back foot to meet the front. Forward fold. Breathe. Hands on your hips, push through the feet, coming up, flat back. Bring your hands to heart centre, close your eyes. And settle. It's in these moments of stillness that the yoga really begins. It's very advanced to be still, to be quiet. So we're gonna do that all again. I'm gonna go not faster, but I'm gonna talk less. So you decide, you know the options available to you. You decide what you can do. When you're ready, breathing in, arms overhead. 
Breathing out, folding forward, flat back, down into forward fold. Breathing in, lift your head and heart, half height. Breathing out, folding back down. Stepping back as far as you can with the right foot. Take low lunge or high lunge, up to you. Ground the feet into the floor. Navel to spine, grow long and rise the torso. Hands to which position you chose. Take a breath here. Hands meet the ground again in line with your feet. The back foot, the left foot meets the back foot. Half plank or full plank. Grow forward, lower down. Elbow is tucked. Control. Untuck the feet. Adjust the hands. Breathe in, lift your head and chest. Breathing out, coming back into bent toes, child's pose, or downward dog. Lift the right, uh, everybody into downward dog. Lift the right foot. Bring the right foot to the right hand. Walk it in slightly. Choose your lunge option. Grow forward, rising up. Hands meet the ground, left foot meets the right, forward fold. Bend the knees, hands on hips, coming up, flat back, to Dasana. Breathing in, take your arms overhead. Breathing out, folding forwards, flat back, and then into forward fold. Stepping back with the right, uh, left foot. Lunge, grow forward, lift up. Lift the breastbone, really squeeze the bum to stabilize the hips and the lower back. Hands meet the floor, stepping back with the right foot into a plank variation. Breathing in, grow forward, breathing out, lower down. Settle, readjust. Hips push into the mat. Breathe in, lift your head and chest, cobra. Breathing out, down, child's pose or downward dog. Take a big, deep breath here. Everybody into downward dog, lift your hips. Lift the left foot. Bring it forward, anyhow you can. Walk it into the middle slightly. Choose your lunge option, grow your chest forward. Lifting up, pushing through the foot. Sinking into the hips, lift the breastbone. Hands on the floor in line with that front foot. Right foot comes forward to meet the left into a forward fold. And then the knees, hands on hips, coming up flat back. Bring your hands to heart center, close your eyes and breathe. Enjoy the benefits the heat created. So that is almost a sun salutation. If you ever do vinyasa, that sequence will be in between every single move you do. Very difficult. So we're gonna work on some forward folding. Similar to how we start the sun salutations, but a bit more relaxed. We're going to breathe in, lift the arms overhead, and then breathe out. We're just going to fold forward, sweep the arms, and then breathe back in, coming up. We're just going to do it at our own rate. So breathing out, breathing in, coming up. Go at your own pace. 
because we have all different breath ratios. So this should loosen off the back. Remember you can bend your knees. Just clearing out any fuzz in the spine, in the shoulders, one more. Bring your hands overhead. Gonna bring your hands through from heart center, folding flat back. And then you're going to come into a forward fold. So normally if, you, if your hands can't meet the floor, you would rest on your shins or your thighs. But this time you're going to do something different. So if your hands don't meet the floor, take a big bend in your knees so they do. And what you're going to do is you're going to lift the front of your feet up and see if you can place your hands underneath. So you may only be able to get your fingertips underneath or that may feel comfortable if you've got wrist problems or you might be able to get your whole hand underneath. Bend your knees so you can get onto your hands. Drop the head. And play around with the weight in your feet. Maybe you can Bring the weight into your toes and into the ball of your feet, maybe giving your hands or your fingers a little massage. You want it so your hips, your pelvis is tilting towards the sky, so you're also getting a stretch in the back of your legs. Let your head hang heavy. Can you bring it back to your breath? Breathing in, your hips grow a little taller. Breathing out, your head gets a little lower. Breathing in, breathing out. And you're gonna untuck your feet. You're gonna step back with the left foot, step back with the right foot, knees to the ground, everybody child's pose. Find your breath here. Maybe you can feel your quads, they worked really hard to protect your back so you didn't go too deep in that movement. Everybody tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward dog. You're gonna walk your hands, your feet to your hands. And you can do that any way you want. I just saw this week about walking tippy toes and I really like it. Depends on the, on the, how long your legs are and your arms are, I suppose. Come into the front and just roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae, so not flat back this time. Tuck the pelvis under, stack the vertebrae, round the shoulders back, lift your chin, let your eyes come up last. Breathe. If you're not at the front of your mat, come to the front of the mat. I'm going to move away from the chest of drawers. You're going to take a big step back with your right foot. So you're in a high lunge, not as deep as when we were doing the sun salutation. From here, you're going to roll that heel back down to the ground so that the heel of the front foot and the back foot are almost in line. You're going to bend the front knee and you're going to push into the mat with your foot, especially that uh, little toe edge. We're in warrior feet here. Front knee aims to the little toe. And what we're going to do, we're going to turn it into warrior one. So we're really going to encourage the ribs 
and the shoulders to face the front. Now this is really tough because your hips are wide open. So knowing that, you are absolutely welcome to adjust the back foot if you wanna come a little wider to make the rotation of your torso easier. Whichever version you've chosen, come hands to heart center or biceps by ears. Need your knee over that front ankle with it heading in the little toe direction. Slight navel to spine. You wanna think about rotating the muscles in your thighs outwards really to get a strong stable pelvis relax the shoulders widen the collarbones reach to the ceiling and if you want to you can raise your gaze your drishti that focus up slightly you're not going to be looking at your hands crunching the back of your neck just looking above breathe from here you're going to straighten that front leg let your torso come round to where your pelvis is i moved that foot so i'm just going to move it back slightly so my heels are in line two front feet trying to get your hips facing the log edge of your mat hands go wide Reach forward, tip the torso and the arms. If you want to, you can look at that top arm, or if it's comfortable, you can take that top arm and place it behind your sacrum. Keep breathing. And if you want to go a little deeper, or you can rest your hand onto your shin, breathe. Trying to get this pelvis this hip back and by doing that you're probably going to have to squeeze one bum cheek more than the other if it's uncomfortable to look to the ceiling you always have the option to look at the mat keep breathing keep rotating when you're ready bend that front knee coming up to warrior two Hands are outstretched and you're looking at the front fingers. You're gonna windmill your hands either side of the mat, rotate back off the, the back ankle, and you're gonna step back, come into child's pose. Hands out in front, round by your sides. Whatever feels comfortable. Another option for child's pose with your arms, if you have the flexibility in your shoulders, with your arms outstretched, you bend at the elbows and place your hands in a prayer position behind your head. Doesn't work for everybody. It might work for you. Whichever position you've chosen in your, in your arms, I want you to create space in your armpit. That sounds really silly, but maybe grow a little longer. And breathe. Enjoy the rest. Place your hands out in front. If they're not already, tuck your toes, downward dog. You're gonna walk your feet to the front of the mat, however you want to. I'm practicing this version at the moment. Once they meet, rolling up gently. I'm gonna face the other way, front of the mat if you're not already. You're gonna step back with your left leg this time. High lunge, bend in the front knee. From here, rolling back the ankle, 
deep bend into the front knee, head into the little toe edge. Foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat, little toe edge of the foot really pushing in. From here we try to encourage the rib cage, the shoulders to face the front. If they don't, we adjust the back foot to give ourselves a wider stance to create a little leeway in the hips and then we get there. Hands overhead or heart center and breathe. Very strong, keep pushing with the feet. You're definitely gonna feel the left bum cheek working a little harder just to suck in that femur, the thigh bone. Making it stronger, making it stable. If you want to, you can take your gaze above slightly, lifting the chin, just continuously trying to rotate the rib cage round to face the front. Use your breath. Straighten the front leg. Hands T position. I'm going to walk my foot back slightly so the heels are in line. Reaching forward, tipping the torso. Place your hands on your shin, on your thigh, or if you want to work your core more, you can place it pressing the thigh. Top hand could be reaching to the ceiling, or you can place the, place the back hand onto your sacrum. Again, you're working that left butt cheek, squeezing it in. Try and rotate that top shoulder back. Keep breathing, keep, keep growing long in the torso. Remember when we did that side stretch earlier and I said, you can get a little deeper, but you're probably gonna sacrifice that side where you get a little shorter. Same point here, we want to grow both side bodies long. I can get deeper, but I'm gonna sacrifice it. Keep breathing, final breath. Bend the front knee, hands come to a T position. Look at the front hand, warrior two. Circle the hands down to the mat. Roll off the back foot so you're in that lunge position. Take that back foot, front foot to meet the back, knees to ground, child pose. And if you want to, you can try placing your elbows on the floor and your hands in a prayer position. If not, you can choose whichever one you want to breathe. So maybe when I said to you, breathe into your armpits, you're like, what the hell does that mean? How can you breathe into your armpit? Your rib cage goes up into your armpits. If you were to touch your armpits, there is ribs under there. Can you breathe into that part of the ribs? Can you breathe into those bit of the lungs? Think about widening that area. And placing your hands out in front, if they're not, tuck the toes, lift into downward dog. Making sure hands and feet take equal weight. If there's too much weight into your hands, it's gonna be painful after an hour. Hips to the sky, drop the head. Maybe some yes no's in, into the neck just to relax them off. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna shuffle the feet back slightly, come forward into a plank pose. And then you're gonna drop your hips and lift your chest. Your arms are straight. I'm gonna rest my knees on the floor, onto the mat. 
So this is a version of Upward Dog, which if you go to a, um, a yoga class, you're gonna see. I want you to lay down on the mat and we're gonna do some variations of it. So Upward Dog is really, really tough in lots of different places on the body. However, 99% of people will try and do it in a yoga class and they'll do it wrong and they will hurt themselves. These are the options for you to try. Bring your hands down by the bottom of your ribs. Breathe in, come into baby cobra. So your feet, your hips pushing into the mat. Your feet, you know where you like them. Any lower back problems, you take them as wide as the mat. And you're lifting and working your back muscles. Your hands are not doing much. This is tough in itself. Push your belly into the mat, keep breathing. Squeeze the bum to protect the lower back. And relax back down. So that is baby cobra. If you ever hear up dog in a yoga class, know that baby cobra is always an option for them. When you're ready, reset, hips into the ground, shoelaces or toes pushing into the mat, breathing in into baby cobra. And now if you want to, you can try to push into your hands, keeping the hips into the mat and come into full cobra. Breathe, this is a lot on the lower back. Grow your heart forward, shoulders down. And relax, back down. Whenever you hear cobra, know that that baby cobra is always an option. Last one, we're gonna go into up dog. You're gonna lift your head and chest, straighten your hands, your hips come off this time, and you're going to, if you want to, lift your thighs off the floor, squeeze your bum, push the top of your feet, into the mat, grow the head and chest forward. This is too strong for the most of us. Go back to baby cobra now. Keep breathing. Take baby cobra if that works better in your body. Squeeze the bum, navel to spine, all the same teaching points. Grow the heart forward, shoulders away from your ears. Back muscles working. Toes and fronts of feet pushing into the mat. Breathe. And when you're ready, lower down. That was an extreme back bend. And now we're gonna go into extreme forward bend. So pushing back into your heels, child's pose. We've just put a lot of weight in our hands. So either turn your palms upwards, or take your arms by your side, palms upwards. Breathe here. Maybe you're gonna get feelings in your lower back, upper back. Maybe they've not moved that way in a while. You need to be very, very careful. Breathe. And every breath you take in, you can feel your spine moving, separating, getting longer as the breath separates each vertebrae. In a class, if I say, take up dog, and I turn around and see someone doing baby cobra, that to me tells me that that person knows exactly what they're doing, that that person knows exactly what their body needs. And any yoga teacher will be exactly the same. It's better to do a pose well than to go into a full expression of a pose and do damage. That's not yoga, that's not kind to your body at all. So 
some final breath. And place your hands onto the mat in front, put your torso up. We're going to go into some seated positions now. Move the mat slightly, come into a seated position with your legs out long. So if you know you need to sit on a pillow, block, mat, whatever it is, take it. Going to take the left foot and cross the thigh bones and place the left blade, little toe edge of the foot onto the mat. So depending on your flexibility of your hips, may have to be crossed at your shin. I'm gonna come off of the pillow because that um, makes it worse for me. So previously, when we've been doing a twist, we place the sole of the foot onto the ground. This is different. We're placing the little toe edge, the blade. And what you want to do is try and cross it so much that your knees become almost in line. So this is option one for you. Option two. You have the option to sweep that right foot to the right hip. So you're coming into, um, this is cow face pose. If you do this and your right, um, your left buttock comes off of the mat, you have two options. You can um, wedge your pillow under there, or I would advise that you know your body, be kind to your body and take that leg out long. Whichever one you've chose, make sure you ground your sitting bones into the mat. Shoulders back and down, sitting up tall. Gonna lift up and fold over. So it might not be a big movement. Hopefully you can get to a place where you can relax your your hands, your arms, your shoulders, your face. You bring compression of the hip. So the further you can get into the forward fold is gonna put more weight into that leg to give more compression into the hip. If your head hanging is a bit too strenuous, maybe stack your fists and rest your head on your hands. Can you get a little lower? And when you're ready, see if you can bring it back to that equal breath, in for four, out for four, or whatever suits you. If you've got tight hips, this may feel unfamiliar, may feel discomfort as long as there's not pain. See if you can breathe through it. Relax in some other places. Walk in the hands into the body. Coming up tall, legs out long, windshield wiper. could be some heat or some cooling in that compressed hip. So go on the other side, taking your right foot, crossing at the thighs if you can, if not the shins, resting on the outer edge on the little toe. If you want to, I'm going to do it on this side, sweep that left leg back. Otherwise, keep it out long. Both sitting bones reach and root into the ground. Breathe in, grow tall. Tall as you can, grow the crown of the head, press the sitting bones down, and on your next out breath, fold forwards. So if you have stacked both knees, you've done it on both sides, you're gonna feel a huge compression. 
You need to breathe through it. You want to make sure that you're not rounding the spine. You're growing tall, so going forward and then down. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. Relax your breathing. When we compress joints, we um, lubricate the joints, makes it more juicy. And when a joint is lubricated and more juicy, it means it works smoother. It's gonna help you in everyday walking, moving, exercising. Keep breathing. And then sitting up tall, nice and slow. Uncross your legs, little wiggle. Feel the life back into those hip socket. And come to a seated position. So the next position I'm gonna show you, some of you have already done, so you're welcome to go into whichever one you've chosen. Everybody else, um, I need you to watch me on this one because it's uh, an important one to watch first of all. So if you have a wall and you want to make, if you want to um, be more relaxed, more calm, then take your legs and place them up the wall. Bum as close as you can to the wall, legs out long. So if you've already done this with me and you did the other option, maybe you want to try this one. So your legs can have a slight bend. You can push them so they're flat at the wall, shoulders pressed into the mat, and relax. This is very calming, restorative, relaxing. If you want to take this a little further into a slight inversion, you can lift your hips and place as many pillows under your pelvis as possible. If you don't have a wall, you can come away from the wall and just hang here. You can go as high as you want to. Again, relaxing, calming, recovering, restorative, gorgeous, never fails. Great at night, great after a flight. So there are two options. If you want to feel calm, go with that one. Then you've got this option, which is shoulder stand more energetic, more effortful. If you want to try it, you lay on your back in um, bridge pose, push your hands into the floor, bum lifts. You're gonna come up and then you're going to bring one knee in and then the other. And then you're gonna walk your hands down your back, squeezing your thighs together and if you want to, you can take them straight out in top, flex your feet, point your toes, but your legs are active. Your head, your gaze never comes off of your feet or your body. You don't turn to the side. Your neck is in a very vulnerable position here. To come out of it, knees bend, slowly guiding your bum back down to your mat. They're the positions. If you've done them already before with me during last week, you're welcome to go into them now. If not, choose what you like and go there. So those that want to go up the wall, those that want to lift the pelvis onto the pillow or your bolster and have more of a calming session, do that. And if you want to try, we can go back into shoulder stand. Feet push into the floor, lift the bum up, the hands come in. You walk your hands down your back. Try and get your elbows in, your chin tucked neatly into your chest. And if you want to, you can take your legs out long, squeezing the bum, rotating the thighs outwards and take some breaths 
If you're in shoulder stand, you're going to feel the breath be very close to your throat, very up high in the chest. It can cause anxiety. Control that. Know that it's just the shape of your body and that the air is absolutely fine. Your breathing is fine. If you've chosen to have your legs in the air, legs up the wall, good for you. So beneficial. It's fantastic for giving a moment off your heart, both poses are. Fantastic for sending any blood back to the heart, draining any lymph nodes, helping the toxins come back up the body, any that are hanging around in the feet. Very calming. If you're in shoulder stand, come down very slowly. And have a moment with your knees in your chest, laying on your back. And those of you in the restorative pose, gently come in away from the wall or away from your pillow and also placing your knees into your chest. When we do legs up the wall or legs on a bolster, um, hips on a bolster, like I said, it's very calming, great at night, great when you're stressed, helpful if you can't sleep and you have jet lag. When you want some energy, shoulder stand, fantastic for that, very active, Gets all that energy back up to the head, helping you ready to go for a raring day. So they balance your energy, whichever position you choose. Everybody with the knees into the chest, you're gonna take the right leg out long. And the left knee, you're going to place one hand on the left knee and you're going to drop it over to the right side. You're going to encourage a twist in the torso so you can keep your shoulder blades flat onto the ground. Your knee may or may not touch the opposite side. If it's too strenuous on your hamstrings, you're welcome to bend that long leg slightly to make it more comfortable. And if you want to, you can turn your head and look over your shoulder, the opposite shoulder, on the way you're turning. Breathing into the ribs. Creating space between your hip and your armpit. Gently rotating the spine, little by little. And when you're ready, bringing everything back into the center. Bring your knees into the center. Taking the opposite leg out long. And you're gonna take the right knee and drop it over to the left. Keeping both shoulders fixed onto the ground. If you want to, you can look over the opposite shoulder and then just let your knee fall to wherever it falls. Don't pressure it to the floor. If the hamstrings 
feeling it a little bit, you need to bend that long leg, do so. You know what serves you. You know what suits you. Breathe and create space. Feeling heavy in the mat, letting gravity pull that knee towards the ground. When you're ready, bring in everything back into the center, bring your knees into your chest. Have a little rock and roll, rope the pelvis onto the mat. And when you're ready, taking your legs out long, arms by your side, walking the shoulder blades down the mat. Your final Shavasana. Everything you've worked towards leads here to rest. Let your bones feel heavy on the mat. Let your muscles soften. Let your fingers curl. Teeth part, jaw relaxed. Soften the muscles in your face. These moments of stillness are just as important as the pose itself. Our body is processing everything that's just happened. All the back bending, forward folding, side stretching twisting, all the pushing and pulling, it's digesting it. <laughs> Start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe some wrist rolls, ankle rolls, bring life back into your body. One foot to the floor, the other foot into the floor, knees into your chest, give him a squeeze, give yourself a hug. Roll your knees over to your right. When you're ready, push yourself up to a seated position. Hands to heart center, close your eyes, shoulders back and down, crown of the head grows tall. No matter how many of these classes you've done, no matter how many poses out of the class that you managed to complete, You are capable. You now know your body a little bit better, which means you're able to give it exactly what it wants and when it wants. You know what it needs and you know what doesn't help. It's important that we never forget that and we always continue to grow as our bodies change. Taking a deep breath in and out, dropping your head to your hands. Namaste, everybody. Good.
let me adjust little boy there we go hold on a minute 